I'm very well. I had the president on my uh, radio show for a whole hour on Monday. We caused a bit of news. Even the Daily Mail wrote it up. So he's in fine fettle. And, uh, you know, the, the eight months waiting until the election can't come fast enough. And do you believe that he will win? Do you think he will be allowed to stand in the end? Well, I think you just nailed it there, my friend. It's it's not a question of if, it's a question of will he be allowed. If you look at the polling right now, uh, if the election were on Monday, it would be like a 49-state blowout, yeah. uh, for example, what happened with uh, Mondale. But the question is, will it be fair, will it be free, or are they going to try and put him in prison? Right now he's facing 730 years, not 70 years, 730 years in prison. This insane judge has put a bail on him of almost half a billion dollars. So they're going to throw in everything in the kitchen th sink to try and stop him because they know uh, in a fair and square match he's going to beat Joe Biden. I mean, is, is America heading away from democracy? Well, look, if you look at what happened just on Tuesday, my former White House colleague, Peter Navarro, so I was just a lowly deputy to the president. He was an assistant to the president, and he refused to comply with an illegal uh, congressional committee, the January 6th committee run by Nancy Pelosi, and he was charged with the misdemeanor of contempt of Congress, which is usually a slap on the wrist. Instead... Uh, he was arrested uh, at Reagan Airport, put in handcuffs, put in leg irons, and he just started a four-month sentence for a misdemeanor contempt of Congress charge. So uh, I think we've already arrived. I mean, you know, James, we've already arrived at the yeah. Police States Act. Because if you work it's a banana republic Trump, there. But don't you think they'll fix the election? You believe the last election was fixed, don't you? Because Trump got more votes than he did when he won. So will they fix the... If they can't get him on anything else, will they fix the election? And then what will that? Will there be a revolution in the States? Uh, look, they, they, they've, um, you know, they, they've got um, a, a record of doing that, right? They, they've... If you'd go back to 1960 and Joe Kennedy buying all the votes of the dead people in Chicago, they've got form. They've been doing this for about six years. President Bush. Mm. Uh, do you remember the, the younger Bush? Oh, yeah. hanging chads in Florida. Mm. But but the, the big the big difference between 2020 is they don't have COVID. At least, you know, God willing, there won't be a COVID 24 announced, and they don't have this excuse to mail. They mailed out. 81 million ballots to people who hadn't requested them and basically ran the election in the, you know with with you know absentee voting now if they don't have that excuse this time mm. it's going to be a little bit tougher but they have form they All have right. form let's talk about this 4 years ago uh, president trump appointed you to a pentagon board in mm. yesterday uh, it was called um, Beijing Biden, I think that's your term, uh, has tried to fire you from the board, but you refuse to go. What's happening? Yeah, before the president left uh, the White House uh, in uh, July of 2019, he uh, appointed me to a presidential position at the National Security Education Board in the Pentagon, and that's a four-year term. And I guess they just woke up. I mean, Biden woke up from his nap and realized Gork is still in that position and yeah. demanded, sent me an email from the White House on Friday morning saying, if you don't resign by 5 p.m., you will be terminated. And I had oh. news for the White House. Uh, I can't be fired before my term expires. You'd have to change the legislation that concerns presidential appointees for that position so you can stuff it, Joe Biden. And what took him so long? <laughs> As you say, why did it take so long to try that on? Look, oh, why, why, does, why does he go on three-day weekends every weekend to Delaware? Yeah. And why does he, you know, have to... Why does he not have events after 8 p.m.? Yeah. Because he has to go home for his Horlicks. I mean, maybe he just woke <laughs> up and said, oh, 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 that Gorka, he's working in the Pentagon. So who knows? I mean, what a serious situation. Both the candidates are fairly elderly. Uh, Trump, I think, will probably win if there's a fair and free election. Yeah. But the Democrats surely must be able to find somebody. I'm not being rude, but Biden doesn't seem to know what time of day it well, is. Well, it's cruel they're using him. He obviously has a form of yeah. you know, dementia.
it's it's not you know your opinion or my opinion that your, your viewers and listeners can go online you know and watch all of these videos with him talking to dead people who aren't there you know mixing up his wife with his sister and then having brain freezes opening so, doors that don't exist yeah trying yeah, to walk and, and through them the, but I this mean, is dangerous why, because how, how do you do this think think of this and please don't take my word for anything check it out he is now banned by the white house from walking up the main staircase to Air Force One. Air Force One has the president's staircase at the front, yep. the big one, and then has the kiddie staircase at the back for the staff. Biden is now wearing old people non-slip trainers mm. and is forced to use the kiddie staircase. For safety, yeah, for his own yeah, safety. Because yeah. he felt, remember that video? He yeah. falls he up the stairs. Up the stairs. Yeah. Four but surely, times, not once, not twice, four no. times. He's no good with stairs. Surely there must be somebody more uh, capable and able from the democratic side Somebody can go upstairs that can can actually stand and, and get people more interested in the election in america because yeah. it's slightly embarrassing isn't it well, slightly it, it is but this is this is the catch 22 they create for themselves so they have this guy who they've slotted in there and it's very, very difficult to get rid of an incumbent president unless he, you know, resigns for family reasons. His wife, Jill, is desperate to be the first lady for another four years. And then here's the beautiful insurance policy we have. How do they not replace him with the vice president who happens yeah. to be black and a woman, a woman who in the Democrat primaries five years ago got less than 2%. So they're in this catch-22. If we can get rid of him, can we skip over the black woman and not play identity politics? It's mm. just delicious to watch. But even more dangerous, he could die during his presidency and then she would by default become president. Yes, correct. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that uh, Donald Trump is relaxed about the election? You had him on your show for an hour yesterday. Is he relaxed or is he upset about what's going on? Look, I don't, I don't think I'm talking out of school here. When I went to see him, I saw him a couple of times in December at Mar-a-Lago to his estate, and I went in there to talk about what happens in the White House if, if God willing, you know, we do our part and he wins. And before I could even start the conversation rolling, the first thing he was concerned with is fraud, is election fraud, mm. and how do we stop it? So, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a force of nature. He's indomitable. The way he just, you know, they keep the pylon keeps coming and he just keeps on trucking. He's unstoppable. It strengthens him, the pylon. Well, he, he, yeah, he does. He really feeds on the hatred yeah. and, and, you know, the support of the working class Americans who want to have a border, who don't want to have record inflation, don't want a war in Europe, don't want war in the Middle East, want a petrol prices that are back where they were. I mean, it was yeah. it was a dollar eighty for a gallon when we were in the White House. It's hit seven dollars in California under Biden. But but at the end of the day, his concern is a real one. I what? mean, when. Sorry, when you look Seb, at the results uh, of 2020, there's a lot, lot, lot of questions, James. If um, Trump doesn't win and people get the feeling that they've been let down, mm. um, various people on social media, so I'm not saying I believe it, are saying mm. that if, if it isn't a fair, an honest election and Trump doesn't win, mm. there could be civil war again. Yeah. Well, look, we, we had uh, January the 6th where we had four hours of a protest gone wrong. But I would say the left is the problem because we had the quote unquote summer of love with Black Lives Matter with literally hundreds of cities sacked, $3 billion worth of damage done, arson of the presidential church one block from the White House. And, and let's be clear, I'm not worried about what happens if President Trump doesn't win. I'm worried what happens if he wins, because we know mm. the left has normalized violence. Can you imagine what happens with BLM and Antifa yeah. if President Trump wins? And we have this weird system that the UK doesn't have. In the UK, you have the election and the prime minister has to get packing within a week. Here, we, we have the election at the beginning of November, and we don't have the inauguration until the end of January. It's, in, it's, it's asinine. Mm. So we've got, you know, potentially three months of of lunacy and rioting by the left that's my worry that if is ridiculous. Wins, what are the left mm. going to do sebastian good to talk to you thanks sir. i'm sure we'll talk to you again give uh, trump our best wishes